Yo my people, it's your boy Tris Taylor, the king of high ticket closing. Yes people, it's Cam, the self-proclaimed goal of client acquisition. And together we're niche group, the cut the crap boys. And today we're here to cut the crap on remote closing. Now you probably heard this terminology a lot, but not many people really break down what it really is and the secrets behind how people are making money. Because they are. Let's just start with the simple basics. Cam, I'm gonna let you go first. What's remote closing? Okay, I'm gonna answer in one line. Selling over Zoom. Simple as that. And the second thing I wanna know is, what is high ticket sales? So high ticket sales is the process of you selling a product, which is that higher ticket than what most people are used to. Now that could be seen as perception. Personally, anything that's 1,000, 2,000 pounds, they usually fall below that line. But if you start talking about 3,000 pound packages and above, then we start talking about high ticket. Now the process of the sales is just being able to speak to people who can afford and qualify for a high ticket product. All right, appointment setters and closers. An appointment setter is someone that sets appointments, but the way that they do it is typically they'll be given a lead list of names or prospects, should I say, and their job is to book those people in for appointments with their closer. They are the first chain of the sale. I'm sure you guys have done it before where you fill your details out in a form for something and then someone calls you. The person that's calling you is an appointment setter. So they're not actually selling you on the clothes. They're not gonna ask you for any money, but they are gonna ask you to set a date and a time with someone who's a closer who will then close you. People often turn their nose up at appointment setting, but commissions for an appointment setter are typically around three to 5%. So they still do get a good commission, but- Let's hold that. We're gonna explain that to okay. you. Yeah. Closing. So the appointment setter, what they would have done is sold the appointment, not a product. Sold the appointment, mm -hmm. not a product. Now the closer, would then jump on that call. They would have in-depth notes if you're a good appointment setter, and their job would be to close the deal. Now, for those who really want us to really simplify it, when you close a deal, your prospect parts with money in exchange for services, goods, or product, right? They will get on the phone call or a Zoom call. They will close that deal, and by the end of that call, or maybe after an invoice process, the prospect would have paid. Simple as that. Okay, number four, and I think the viewers will appreciate this, I want you to tell the people about your journey with high ticket sales. So I got into high ticket sales at 19 years old in 2012, um, 2020, 2012, and that was prior to the remote aspect of things. Um, and I've been in the high ticket sales industry for the last 12 years. When I first got into the industry, I was an appointment setter. Um, and the high ticket products that we were responsible for was the fine wine investment market. As an appointment setter, I was on a basic of a thousand pounds and a commission of 5% on the deal and 3% on the redeal. However, I gave up my retainer because I was aiming to be able to get to closing ASAP and closers never had a retainer. So I gave up my basic for a higher percentage commission. Um, within the first year, I was able to leave with takeover of 106,000 pounds. I got my financial literacy up. Um, and, and the main thing that I think was huge for me is I started to study sales rather than wing it. Two years, a year and a half later, I became a closer. I was on a better commission structure and I never saw a year less than 250,000 pound take home. That's when I started to make the big bucks, you could say. It was your fast paced, high ticket, we can make loads of money style office in the city of London. So that environment and the structure really helped me to make the money. And also I could see the money, the money was oozing from everyone, from the manager director, to the seniors, to even some of the juniors. And then it got to the point where I realized that as much as I love sales and master sales, I was even better at training sales. So I started training other companies in high ticket sales. Then I started taking a few more people on more one-to-one -one basis, came out of the industry for two years, built a car wrapping company for anyone who doesn't know, um, and then circled all the way back, met this guy, understood that closing within the high ticket was now pivoting to the internet and Zoom and social media and YouTube, and here we are. Mine is a little bit different. So I was a setter and a closer, but I was actually a setter and a closer for my own business. I probably started my own business when I was maybe 20 or 21, uh, and it was a, a marketing agency. So it was the typical kind of SMMA model. Now, when you first start an SMMA, the said thing to do at the time was just to focus on sales. And it wasn't even to really worry about marketing. I really enjoyed the sales. I really, that, that was my favorite part of it. The actual marketing side, I didn't enjoy it so much. I really learned how to sign clients, so how to appointment set for my own business. Now, this wasn't always on the phone, like what you'll be used to now. A lot of it was DMs, emails. I started off really, really low ticket because my sales wasn't that good. I had no quote unquote formal training. I was just out there trying my luck. And the first deal I ever closed was for $200. 
and it seems very insignificant, but to me, it was extremely significant. So then it was 200, then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make it 500, then it was 1,000, then it was 2,000, then it started to be 3,000, 3,500. As I started to move through after the years had gone by, I had closed deals for 8,000 pounds a month, and I was just closing bigger deals. So everything I was doing was all closing for my own agency. In terms of commission, I was pretty much getting the whole thing because it was my own business. And for me, closing has always been remote. I've never sold on the phone. I've never done door to door sales. But what I have done is I have taken hundreds of thousands of Zoom calls and spoken to hundreds of thousands of prospects and made hundreds of thousands of pounds over Zoom. So that's my experience with it. Do you need sales experience? I think that brings, on, brings us on very well. Do you need sales experience? Yes and no. So look, if you don't have sales experience, you're not gonna make the money that has been sold to you. But the best way to get sales experience is on the job. So to get started, you definitely don't need sales experience. What I would recommend doing, if you don't wanna struggle like how I did and you don't wanna have to settle tiny deals and barely make any money, is get some training, then go in and actually put that training into practice. How do you find a good offer to sell? And what is a good offer to sell? If you end up with a shit offer to sell, then you may have a shit outcome. So within high ticket sales for me, uh, mine was very much about the company and obviously how rewarding the product was for the people that were buying. So if you've got a good product, you're always gonna have an advantage. How to find those, generally speaking, is anywhere there is a lot of eyes or a demand on a mastered skill. So if someone has mastered a skill and they're a personal trainer or a sales trainer in real estate, in fitness, nutrition, whatever that is, if they've mastered a skill, they typically could build an audience. If they've got an audience, they typically could sell a product. If they've got a product, that's a good offer. Yeah, I would say to be a bit more boring than that, lead flow is important. You don't want an offer where they're not getting any leads or they're not booking any calls. You also want to work at an offer that's already selling. A big thing is that the first jobs that you're going to find is going to be people who have an offer that isn't selling and then they're going to come to you and say they want you to sell it. That's just going to make your life super difficult. It's going to make you doubt yourself. And especially when you're a beginner, you're not going to know whether it's you that's rubbish or it's the offer that's rubbish or it's the company that's rubbish. And a second thing, which is something that's always overlooked, is that you have to believe in the product. If you don't believe in the product, you're not going to be able to sell the product. All right, cool. So one of the big misconceptions about the remote closing industry, you'll always see the cliche, how to make 15, 20, 30,000 pounds a month. And it's possible, very possible. We're doing it, people in our team are doing it. However, what most people do is when they look at that, they think, but well, how? How could you make that? That's impossible. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a live breakdown just to give you guys a bit of an idea on how money is made. I'm going to start with closing and I'll let Cam go on with appointment setters. So as a closer, to give you a typical example, I'll give you an example of ours because then therefore it's much more realistic. We sell products at 3K. So let's say products at 3K or 5K. But for the example, we will work this based on 3K. So our product is 3K. To give you guys some background, our product that we sell, sell is uh, access to our sales academy, right? So whatever the company is selling, let's say their product is 3K. Now you as the closer would have had an appointment set. So your appointment would be set by appointment setter, yeah? Then what you would do is you would jump on that call with the prospect and you would close for 3K. We're going to really make it as simple as possible. Well, now, once you close for 3K, for every deal that you close, you will get 10% of the deal. I would say 10 to 20. 10 I to think 20. 10 is actually lower side. Cool. So we'll say 10 to 20% of the deal as commission. So for those who haven't worked that out, that is 300 to 600 in commission. Right? Now, bear in mind, what I really want to explain is how they get to that figure of, let's say, 5K, X, Y, Z, and a month. Now, let's say, on average, how many calls do they have a day? Five, uh, an average job. Five. Average of five calls a day, right? So, five calls a day. Let's say, on average, I don't want to be extreme. Let's I say, like to say 20%. I think that's always 20%. fair. I mean, yeah. For me, I'd always say one in two, but not everyone. Yeah, I, no, the reason I say that is because if you're not an, if you're not a master, this is, I'm assuming the people that are watching this aren't okay, cool. masters of. So 20% of, of five. One call a day. One call a day close. Yeah. So effectively, let's say we're looking at worst case, 300 pound a day. Best case, 600 pound a day, yeah? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Now, how many days a week? Five. So, five days a week? Yeah. And that is time that's due on worst case, like to his work on worst case, 300, that's 1,500 pounds a week, right? 1,500 pound a week times four weeks in a month. We're now talking about six grand a month. My math's right? Mm -hmm. Six grand a month. So that is how you as a remote closer right now can make 6,000 pound a month. Realistically, that is all based on the worst case. Yeah, a few things that that is, is is based on a few things. So the first thing I want to notice is that a three k offer is actually very low end for an offer. Um, a, a job that we place someone at is selling a twenty five k Airbnb course. Um, so and is also ten percent commissions and is also five calls a day. So just to make it clear we like to downplay we rather under promise over achieve not the other way around so everything here is just quite low so the close for 3k is is you're probably going to be closing for something that's higher than that also uh, a lot of the the jobs are going to be retainers so this is going to be is going to compound so that's the first thing um da, 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 20 percent close rate is also in fairness a little bit low but like we said this is worst case scenario if you're a closer 6k a month um that's pounds as well pretty decent if you ask me um if you are a closer now for a uh, for a setter what i want to do i want to go into a setter now setter's role is is pretty similar so again it will be a 3k or 5k product um and then again what you will do is you will go through a lead list and you will dial and get the appointments booked in so once you get those booked in, then a closer will close them. Now, there are a few different types of commissions. Some you're paid per um, appointment that you book in. But for the most case, um, in most cases, you're paid based off of your closer closing them. So when your closer closes, you will get three to, to 5%. It's kind of on the low end. I, I know some of them you get, you get 10%, but let's say three to five percent i'm actually gonna base this off of five percent just because three percent my, my maths is just not gonna allow me to do that so okay five percent so again same kind of deal you will get 150 to 300 pounds per deal is that right yeah based on if you're selling a 3k or 5k so if you're selling a 3k product you're going to get 150 pounds per deal that's closed and again let's go based off of the closers numbers so if your closer is closing one call a day then again you're going to get 150 pounds a day so 150 times five is 750 pounds there we go that's 750 pounds a week if we times that by four that will be three thousand pounds um a month so needless to say it's less money but the thing about appointment setting that is often overlooked is yes you get less money but there's two things that appointment setting is better at the first reason i would recommend people to get into appointment setting first is because it's a lot lower pressure right we would hire very new new salesmen to be appointment setters to be a closer you've got to be top tier. Now, the reason I say that you guys should get into it is because if you try to apply for a closing role, one, you're probably not gonna get it if you're very new. But two, if you do get it, you're probably going to get fired quite quickly because you're going to actively not be closing deals. As an appointment setter, there's a lot more leeway to possibly not book people in, possibly struggle a little bit and actually find your feet. Now, the second reason that I say that is because if we look, a, a closer will take five calls a day. So you're going to talk to five prospects a day. So you're going to learn how to talk to five different people a day um, and let's say 20 people a month or something like that. Now, an appointment setter, especially if you're new to sales, you're probably going to be calling, what do you say, 50 people a day? Yeah. So you're talking to 50 people a day. So your skills are going to increase a lot faster than a closer's will because you're going to be talking to a whole loads of reps and you're going to be talking to different types of people so to everyone watching this if you are fresh i know it's more alluring to go for this 6k a month and like like we said we're downplaying that but becoming a good appointment setter is one of the most valuable skills in the world and most businesses most of them, not all of them 
are better off looking for closer in the sense of they have more closers than they do have appointment setters. If I was getting into the industry and if I were you guys, I'd be an appointment setter for six months to a year, make your 3K a month, learn your skills, then go straight into being a closer. Then you're not going to be earning 6K a month. You're going to come into the game with skills. You're going to be able to earn the 10, 15, 20K a month straight away. I'm going to go on a limb and say, and I want this to really be clipped as well, this is the stuff about remote closing that your favorite guru will not tell you. Mm -hmm. People, anything else? That's it from me. People, there you have it. We have broken down the basics, the bare minimum, so you know enough now to be able to go and look for the right sales academy, mm -hmm. to apply for the right remote sales roles. And if they are looking for the right sales academy and roles... I mean, it, we might have a link in the bio that helps you that helps you get training and it also might give you a guaranteed job placement at the end but i'm i'm not sure sorry about that